What's up guys and welcome back to another episode of the Lockdown Career Mode, it's episode number 37 and today we've got the second leg of our Europa League playoff round against Bohemians. If we get through, which we should do, we should see the group stage draw for the Europa League. We've got Crystal Palace away at Selhurst Park and transfer deadline day as well. Loads to get through, let's just get straight to it. But just before we dive into the first of two games today... How interesting is this? Villarreal want to take the club captain Joe Worrell to Spain for 15.7 million. We signed Tamori from them. They want to sign Worrell from us. We could possibly get around 22 to 23 million, but Joe is so consistently good and reliable in the back line. I, I know he won't be a regular star in our first 11 now Tamori's in, but maybe next season we can look to cash in on him. But for now, I want to keep the club captain here. We've got to stay unified with no financial support from the board. Oh, and there's another bid for Joe Worrell as well. This time Everton, they want to keep him in England, but take him to Goodison Park. No, sorry, Carlo. I mean, everyone knows that Joe now will probably be a bench player for us, but he's still our club captain. He's staying here. So first of two games today, then, and it is indeed the second leg of our Europa League playoff. I think we should be going through. I wouldn't be against simulating like I did in the last episode, but you guys know me. I don't like to simulate if I can help it. So we'll play this one. We should be going through, though. Bohemians in the second leg. The way I've always seen simulating in career mode is this. Play the game however you want, man. Play the game however you want. Yes, I don't tend to do it really at all. Again, maybe once, perhaps twice at the very most in a whole career mode save. But ultimately, I know people that simulate several times through the season. It's not an issue for me. Play the game however you want. You bought it. You play however you like, man. I want to change of formation tonight, by the way, for one reason and one reason only. Experimentation can always be helpful. And also, based on the start of the Premier League campaign, just one win in three, we might need to adjust our tactics at some point in this season and go over a different system. So, testing out tonight and see how we get on. There's Joe Lolly on the turn, looks for a bit of space and fires it way over the crossbar. There we go. Through to Lolly. And as you know, Joe's got the pace. We don't see Joe that much nowadays due to our change in tactics, but he's still a very handy squad player. And he's found Ferguson and it's Lorenci! Oh! The Brazilian didn't score last season, and that should have been his first for the club. I would have failed to hit the target there. Well, Carvalho's just won it back, and Tyrese flicks it to him. And this will be 1-0, and it is. Well, the Portuguese cam says, don't worry, bro, I've got this 1-0. Ferguson to Samba, and looking for Tyrese, and he's found him, and it should be two, and it's a brilliant save by Tolbert. Not for the first time tonight. 42 minutes in, we should be two or three goals up, but the finishing touch just hasn't been there. That's a lovely ball to Carvalho, and Joe is onto it, and this should be two. It's Lolly, and he hasn't scored in a while, but instead he's going to selflessly find Carvalho, who smacks it off the woodwork in search of his second goal. Must have hit the goalkeeper's shin as well. On its way behind for a corner, his Fry's header is easily caught. How many times was it in the last episode? Seven, I think it was. Seven times we hit the woodwork, and one already in game one. There is something about playing career mode nowadays where it just seems like there's a magnet in the ball. It really is just so strange. And I don't know whether it affects other game modes as well. But I have noticed it in career mode a lot in the past couple of months. It just seems like now you're frequently hitting the woodwork. And again, I hate to be that conspiracy theory type of guy with the tinfoil hat on. But I just start to wonder, do EA do this on purpose? Trying to intentionally frustrate you? to try and stop you from playing this game mode and play Ultimate Team instead. Just sometimes you have to wonder. So, through the gap to Tyrese, and this should be our second goal. Oh, Campbell, brilliant work, and there is the second. Pops it into the bottom corner, lovely finish. Dad would be proud. 2-0 Forest, Europa League group stages, here we come. Lorenci down left-hand side. Lord knows I love a third goal here. There's the Brazilian storming into the area, and oh yeah! Oh, I do like this guy a lot. He's got so much flair, but he just still can't get that first goal. That would have been sensational. It might have been a shaky start in the league, but thankfully no such problems in Europe. We're into the group stages for the first time in the series, and I can't wait to see who we'll be facing. Routine, comfortable, exactly what we expected. And man of match to Tyrese, who continues to be a squad player for us, but whenever he plays, he plays well. A very good option to have. And so because this was the final playoff round, 
and all the fixtures were played tonight, we should now see the draw for the group stage of the Europa League. Our first ever in the series, and I think we've got some match rescheduled emails. Yes, we do. So this is it then, group stage draw for the Europa League where Nottingham Forest will be taking on in their debut year in Europe. I can't wait. Let's see who we've got. Where are we? We're not in the first four. There we are, Group F. We've got Real Batiste, uh, the Turkish side, who I can never pronounce, and Lech Poznan of Poland as well. So the Spanish side, the Turkish side, and a Polish side as well. Yeah, I think we should be able to get through that. I think Batiste will probably be the favourites. Lech Poznan could cause us a trouble, as could that Turkish side as well. But I, I think we should be targeting at least second place minimum and a place in the round of 32. Group F it is, baby. Bring them on. Ah, and look at Joe coming into my office this morning. Boss, I can't lie. I was worried that you had plans to replace me. I just felt a bit threatened by the new faces that have arrived at the club. A couple of the stories I read in the press. Thanks for straightening things out. Joe, Joe... You're doing great. You're doing great. You're a leader at this team. You're going nowhere, at least not this season. And the first game of the Europa League group stage is going to be at home against the Turkish side. And that will be coming in the next episode as well. Hopefully, we can kickstart the campaign off with a victory. I'm excited, man. Debut year in Europe. And again, the board have asked us to reach the semi-finals. Tough objective. But I think we can do it. So second and final game of today's episode as we take on Crystal Palace away at Selhurst Park. The Eagles, like us, have started off with one win, one draw and one defeat in their first three games. And I've got a sneaky suspicion they could be looking for an outside shot at European football next season. Regardless, I'm hoping for our second win of four to start the campaign off and a big three points here. Come on, Nottingham Forest. Let's make it two away day wins to start the campaign. Crystal Palace have one of the targets I was originally looking for for the new season as well in Calvin Phillips. But uh, to start the season off, I've been impressed with Hayden. And Divock Origi has given us the lead four minutes in. Once again, we hit the woodwork. But this time he kisses the post and finds the back of the net too. 1-0. I mean, it's just so crazy, isn't it? It really is so crazy how common it is that you hit the frame of the goal in FIFA career mode these days. But either way, this one finds the back of the net on its way in. Divock with his second goal of the season already. And now we'll have a full campaign under his belt here in Nottingham Forest after coming in last year halfway through the season. I think he's going to flourish with a full 38 games alongside Josh King. Watch out for this strike partnership. I think they're going to be really good. Yeah, Eric, the lovely ball through. And Fisher has Watson to beat, and he's played it back. Great block by Tamori, though, as our CB Joyce stands strong. And now a quick chance for a break here. Origi to Jay. And King coming forward. And here come the partnership again. It's Josh. It's Origi. It's off the bar. <laughs> and Travis scoops the shot way over the bar. Second time in 14 minutes and third time today. Yeah, there's, there's definitely something going on. Call me a conspiracy theorist. Call me mental. But I'm pretty sure he yeah, have done this on purpose. It's so frustrating, man. It just seems like they're so desperate to get everyone to play ultimate team. And they'll do it at any means necessary. They've destroyed this game mode on purpose to hopefully get more people to play the other game mode and make them more money. It's just, it doesn't sit right with me at all. Or perhaps his corner into the middle. And Origi! Oh, yeah! Divock Origi, my son! Flex those muscles! Talk about the strength! That's what I like to see. Grown man asserting his strength. Look at that! Getting up, leaping like a salmon, and straining those neck muscles as he pops into the bottom corner. 3 0, and what a start. Sorry, 2 0, but what a start. Watson coming forward on one of those trademark runs. Go on, Mason. Go on, Mason. Away you go. Away you go. You scored at Turf Moor, and you might score here as well. Oh, no, it's selfless from the rock. Oh, yeah. What a first half display. You can see Mason celebrating behind Josh. Selfless from Mason. A goal and now an assist. He's off to a great start. Things you love to see. Nottingham Forest clicking and firing on all cylinders. 3-0 in the first half. We scored four at Turf Moor and three in 45 minutes at Selhurst Park. We could be the team to watch when we go away. Pierrick on the turn finds his man. Shot from range, brilliantly saved by Samba. He wants another clean sheet. He wants two and three. Samba with a lovely kick out wide. Look at that for a ball. And now Saka finds Travis. Oh, wow. Travis. 
And it might be turned in for the hat trick. No. Divock denied by a goal saving clearance on the line. That all started for a brilliant kick by Sam, but as Matty's shot is pushed behind. What a game! <laughs> It's dominating possession right now, about 25 to 30 yards from our goal. But we are we are standing so strong. We are not giving them an easy opening and a clear sight of goal. I, I like seeing this. I do. Palace having all of the ball, but literally cannot break us down. Phillips. No, they, they, they can't find any sort of space whatsoever. Ball inside, and Watson's there. That That's brilliant team defense, that. Didn't give them a single sniff. From that, we've broken as well. And it's Saka, and this could be four. This could be four. He's surely got more pace than James Tompkins. And arriving is Travis and Josh King. Oh, that's brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. Two 4-0 results away from home. What a wonderful performance today. Two away days, two 4-0 victories and two fantastic performances. Another picture-perfect display on the road. Nottingham Forest off to a great start. Really fun game this one. And maybe the scoreline was a little bit flattering on us. Palace didn't play too badly, but I love how we stood up to their possession-heavy football. And I'm going to split man the match between three players. Our strike duo, Origi and King, both bagging braces. And Mason Watson for standing firm and claiming an assist. Great team win, though. So moving on, transfer deadline day, but this could be the quickest deadline day I've ever done. There's 10 million in the budget. We could make a squad signing, but really after an impressive start to the campaign, I, I'm not interested, man. I just want to keep the squad together. Yes, we've got targets, but at the end of the day, I, I've got no plans in breaking this squad up and adding in new pieces that might not fit. I, I believe in this Nottingham Forest team. This has got to be the quickest transfer deadline day I've ever done. One signing in the window, if you don't count the two pre contracts. But again, do you know what? I, I don't want to make signings. And I definitely don't want to make sales. I believe in this Nottingham Forest team. We're a unified squad. It's our first season in Europe. It's all about sticking together. No signings, no sales. It's over. As quick of a deadline day as you could have it. But again, no need. No need whatsoever to panic buy someone, cash in on one of our stars. Absolutely no way. I trust this Nottingham Forest team. Can we finish in fifth in the Premier League? It's going to be hard but doable. Can we reach the round of 16 in the FA Cup? Definitely. Semi-finals in the Europa League, that'll be tough. But with the squad we've got, I think it's doable. Deadline day over, the boys stay together. Nottingham Forest are a unified team. And so to end today's episode off, as we see a huge bid there from Bakayo Saka an hour after transfer deadline day, but he's not going to Chelsea via Nottingham, he's staying with us. We've got an academy update, and we'll end the episode off after a quick look at our youth squad, where still, we've got some decent players, a few good Scots, but the main target, or I should say the main youngster we're looking at for the future, is Jay's brother Morgan. I think he'll get a pro deal in a month or two, but for now, he remains in our academy. And that will end today's episode of the Lockdown Career Mode as well, guys, so a massive thank you for watching, I really hope you have enjoyed it. If you did enjoy today's episode, then please do drop a like. Much love to you all, and I'll see you for next episode featuring Wimbledon in the EFL Cup, two more big Premier League games, including Leicester and Newcastle, and our Europa League group opener very soon. <laughs>